In this video, I show you exactly how to perform the McMurray test step by step so you can identify possible meniscal injuries with more precision and confidence. But stick around until the end because I share personal tips and a crucial chapter on what not to do. The mistakes that can lead to false positives or missed diagnosis. We begin with the patient in supine position, line face up and the knee extended, we flex the hip and the knee. Then internally rotate the tibia, firmly supporting the foot on our forearm. With the other hand on the knee area, we push medially, that is inward, bringing the knee into extension. This is the moment where we often feel that click or resistance that reveals far more than we expect. It's not just a mechanical motion, it's communication between structure and function, between injury and adaptation. In this case, we again flex the hip and the knee, but this time we externally rotate the tibia with the proximal hand always placed on the outer part of the knee, we bring the knee into extension. The anterior half of the meniscus is not so easily tested with the McMurray test because the pressure on the meniscus is not as high. This test is considered positive if your patient experiences clicks, locking or pain in the knee. According to research conducted by Bath et al. in 2015, the diagnostic accuracy of this test was as low as 63%, which means that only 63% of all patients were correctly diagnosed by clinicians. Now, what not to do when performing the McMurray test? Now, before you go, let me share a few common mistakes that even experienced therapists make with this test. Avoiding this will not only improve your accuracy, but also protect your patient. Don't rush the moment. The test involves fine motor control. Going too fast can mask clicks or pain. Don't forget to stabilize the hip. If the pelvis moves, your test loses precision. Don't ignore patient feedback. Tension or hesitation can be more telling than words. Don't rely on this test alone. Remember, McMurray is helpful, but MRI gives certainty. Don't confuse and feel resistance with a meniscal sign. Learn to feel the difference. Now, final tip. If you hear a click, ask immediately if it reproduces their usual pain. That's the real clue. And that's it. Now you know how to perform the McMurray test with precision and clinical awareness. If this video helped you, give it a like and subscribe. Have a question, a clinical case to share? Drop it in the comments. I read them all. We've got more hands-on techniques, clinical tips, and therapist-focused breakdowns coming soon, so hit the bell icon to stay in the loop. Want to dive deeper? Check the description for exclusive access to our online courses and resources. And if you want to keep learning now, just click one of these thumbnails. There's a full library waiting for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.